If you have an upcoming informational interview, you want to impress that person, build a new relationship, and set yourself up to get a job offer down the road, well, in this video, we're going over 10 tips so that you can have the best informational interview as possible. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time to the channel, guys, make sure you subscribe because I release videos three times a week for engineering success. And if you want the 1% Engineer Kit, which is a bunch of eBooks and resume templates so that you can win, sign up below and I'll send you a copy. This is a community video, guys, for John Loop, who's informational interview coming up this Monday. John was featured in episode 34 talking all about how he got his job at Tesla. Really quickly, for those of you who don't know, what is an informational interview? An informational interview is not a job interview. What's really going on is there's a situation where a potential employer is not actually hiring and you're not actually ready for a job, but you're meeting in a professional sense so that they can tell you about their company, their culture, the types of roles they have for engineers. And they're also trying to figure out if you're gonna be a good fit for them, but it's mostly a situation where they're on the hot seat actually. They're more so trying to sell themselves to you. Because think about it guys, if you're a company, why would you ever invite in a student or a young professional to do an informational interview if they weren't already pretty sure that you were a good fit. It's really all about them selling you. And we're going to talk about that later, guys, but I just want to lay some groundwork about what an informational interview is because most people have never heard of them. I personally never heard of these until I started becoming a mentor and learned about them. And now I suggest them to my students. So I'm so happy for John. And to further reinforce why John is making the time for this interview, I want to talk about some benefits. 80% of the jobs in America today are never even advertised. If you don't have a relationship with that company, if they don't already know you, you're not gonna know about four out of five jobs out there. So if you build relationships with people and you conduct informational interviews, they already know you, they like you most likely, they trust you, and you may get a cold call about a position before it's even advertised. Plus it allows you to practice, it builds your network so you can just connect with more people in your niche, and it's a super safe environment for you to ask a bunch of questions so if you're not exactly sure what you want to do with your career you can pick this person's brain and figure out if this is going to be the right type of role for you if this is going to be the right company for you so these are really good to do i suggest that all of you start doing informational interviews even if you're working right now you can still be doing these so let's jump right into it with tip number one this is an interview after all even though yes they're on the hot seat and you have a little bit more authority we'll talk about that soon enough all the same rules apply as if this were a regular interview. You can't be late. You have to dress up and wear a suit. You have to be nicely groomed. You have to be well prepared. You have to research the person who's gonna be conducting the interview. You have to thoroughly research the company that you're interviewing with and all their recent wins, the types of softwares that you're using, awards, social media, blog, know about all their projects, all these types of things, guys. You need to be prepared. This is a professional interview after all. Tip number two, set the tone of the interview immediately. You should talk about the goals that you're trying to achieve by having this interview and really take an authority in this interview and talk about how this is what I want to get today. I want to learn about this. I'm going to ask you questions about that. And hopefully when I leave this interview, this is what we have accomplished. And really you are setting the tone for what you want to achieve and you're announcing professionally what you're trying to get out of this meeting so that they know you're serious and that they know you have the ability to run this interview as if it's your meeting, almost like you're interviewing them. So set that tone, guys. Three, announce early that you're gonna ask for referrals. I think it's really important, John, and all of you who are going to be doing informational interviews, to right off the bat talk about how it's your mission to conduct about 10 or more informational interviews this year alone. Therefore, you're setting the stage for the ability to ask for connections to other people in the industry. And it's not awkward and uncomfortable because you're asking them to connect you to maybe one of their competitors or a friend of theirs, but they kind of do peripheral things. So you want to let them know that you want to be connected to people in their network right from the gate. Tip number four, you're in control. Just like I already suggested, guys, you're actually in the driver's seat for an informational interview. They would not be taking the time to meet with you if they didn't think that you are a good fit. And so a lot of times what's really going on here is you are actually interviewing them. They're in the hot seat. You're the one asking more questions. You're trying to figure out if this is a place that you want to work. So have that be in your mind. Change 
change your attitude. Don't be nervous about informational interviews. You should consider yourself sitting up on the throne and driving that interview. And the way that you walk in, the way that you shake that person's hand, the way that you announce your goals, and the way that you ask questions should be with authority, confidence, you're the one in control and just know that from the beginning. It's also going to lead to a lot of positive impressions about you. It's going to show leadership. It's going to show that you command authority via communication. It's going to show that you understand how to run an informational interview and they're going to be impressed by this. So be prepared to run this meeting. Tip number five, have an example position in mind. So whatever this company does, I know John is seeking out a career in aerospace engineering, so I'm not exactly sure, but he probably has an engineering type of role or maybe some sort of niche type of engineer within that field, but you should have an example position in mind that you wanna ask questions around. And hopefully this person is either of that background or manages a team in this role. But with an ideal role in mind, what you can do is you can ask very specific questions about what this person does, what a typical day looks like, the types of projects they work on, and things like this. So you don't wanna walk in with a general mindset about what an average engineer does there. You wanna talk about the type of engineer that you want to potentially be and ask questions around that. And tip number six, if this person is a manager, which they most likely are, then you want to make sure that you can get connected with an engineer who has say five to 10 years of experience so that this person can tell you more about what the day to day is like and give you a better grasp of what you would actually be doing in the office. This also leaves you with another connection once you depart from that interview. So this is maybe something that you want to announce in your goals upfront that you want to be connected with at least one person who has say five years or less of experience so that you can pick their brain about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Tip number seven is leverage your background. John, you have worked at Tesla before this informational interview, so you don't want to really sell yourself to them. You don't have to do that. So what you want to do is say things like, well, when I was working at Tesla, we did this and use that as an example to frame some questions to make you look good, to remind this person that you have worked at a good company and you have some experience. And for other engineers who may not have worked at places like Tesla, you wanna talk about how what we did in this class when I was a leader in this position, what we do with my engineering society with communication, XYZ, whatever it is, you wanna use some experience, use some background, use something credible about you to frame some questions so that further impresses them, but you're not boasting and you're not trying to sell yourself. Leverage your experience, guys. Tip number eight is to ask great questions. I can't say this enough, but you're gonna be running this interview, so you wanna have 10 or more questions ready to go, and they should be all about culture and the types of projects they're doing, what the future looks like for them, the type of person that they're looking for. And it's really good to deploy a little bit of ego magnet here and ask that person in their experience working for this company or when you first started about this company, let them talk about their time at the company and you'll get more and more information, but you want to make sure they have plenty of strong questions ready to go because you're the one that's driving this meeting. You can't run out of questions, guys. And tip number nine, when the interview is over, you need to make sure that you send a thank you note. I am a big fan of a handwritten thank you card directly to that person who gave you the interview because this is going to allow you to stand out from everyone else who just sends a quick little email or may not even thank that person at all, but it's just a nice little touch. They're going to remember that card. They're probably going to keep it on their desk and it's just going to further reinforce what you want out of this relationship, which is not just an interview where you learn from them. You want to stay in touch with this person forever. And that's tip number 10 is to make sure that you guys stay in touch. After you send that handwritten card, make sure you're shooting them an email. Once a month is a good idea. And I would highly encourage you to ask this person to lunch, ask this person to coffee, stay in touch touch, garner that relationship, and have this person become a part of your permanent professional network. So those are my 10 tips for 1% Nation and you, John, so that you can crush it in your informational interview this Monday. I hope these tips helped you. If anyone has any questions at all about informational interviews and what they should do or how you can get an informational interview, make sure you comment below and I will get to all those questions. And if you like this video, guys, consider subscribing because I release videos three times a week for engineering success. Success. Thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% Engineer. Cheers!